automate tasks from Google Sheets to Google Calendar using this simple automation we're gonna go through and build today. In here, you know what we often have is we'll go through and build out maybe a marketing plan, outline a series of tasks of who needs to create it, who needs to do the task, when it needs to be done by, and then we wanna go through and start adding all of those things to a task manager or maybe just do it something more simple, which is Google Calendar, right? Just so you have a way to track your time and, and organize everything efficiently. In here, we've put together a simple Excel sheet and we wanna be able to push all of this information into Google Calendar. Now, this is only a few tasks, but imagine you had a couple hundred in here for your whole team and you don't wanna sit here and manually copy over one line at a time. Using this simple automation we've put together, it is now running. It's gonna go through, read these tasks, and then it's gonna go through and start adding those events based on whoever it's associated to into Google Calendar. Making things super simple, you set the expectations with your team members, makes management of really the plan and setting the right expectations so much easier. Let me just reload this real quick and you'll start seeing all of the rest of the tasks that have been added in here. So if we wanna go through and do this, we need a couple things. First off, we need a connection to Google Calendar and then we also need a connection to um, Google Sheets in this case. From here, and again, I will share a link to this format because there are a few key things we're gonna want um, in order to do this. One, we need the email of the person who we are going to um, assign the tasks to. And if it's not assigned to a person, we need to make sure we have like a default field, which is typically whoever owns Google Calendar itself. And then we need to put the start date and end date timing in a very specific format. This is ISO format, and so there's a standard formatting that you need to follow to do this, which is year, month, day, and then you have to use a little T for time. You need to do um, sort of military time, so from zero to 24 using that time variation, and this is an hour, month, uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. This other little dash here is the time zone difference um, starting from the start of the day. So this will give you an idea. This is set for Eastern time. So negative 0.5 or 05. And this will end up setting all of these events starting from, you know, the typical work week um, throughout the day, right? So once we associate the task, the description, who owns it, the task owner, and we associate these start and end times, we then can come over to Google Sheets and start building it out. So let's go through and create a new event, a new scenario here. Come up here to the top, click new scenario. We're gonna start with a Google Sheets. And we're gonna hit Google Sheets. We're gonna search rows. Now this is pretty simple automation overall, so it's not gonna take a bunch of super complex um, pieces, but we wanna make sure we do this correctly. So make sure it's connected to the right account. Find for that spreadsheet. Here it is. And then once this loads in, we just wanna make sure we grab the correct tasks. Now assume maybe we had the outline of the marketing plan and who's gonna do it and all these other things. Um, again, this is just a very simple, straightforward way of um, presenting it so you guys have a good idea. So we don't need a filter. We can order by, usually we wanna order by the start date, just to make it easier. This way, it's always going from the starting task to the end task and then everything else is done here. We can always hit run real quick just to make sure this works. Great, and I'm gonna rename this. So we're gonna go search for an, an sheet. I always like giving everything a name that we know exactly what we are trying to do with it as we go along. From here, we're then gonna go and search Google Calendar. We wanna see if the event as follow is already existing or not, right? So we want to go calendar, Google Calendar, search events, let this load, make sure it's connected to the right uh, calendar. Generally, when you're running this, you're going to have one person's calendar that's sort of doing all of the intermediary uh, actions. So they're sending all of these requests. So once you've associated one of them, it should do a pretty good job of um, doing the research. So now we want to go through and add corresponding start date, corresponding end date. We don't need this one. We can leave a query 
uh, empty for now. We can hit order by, actually we don't need to do uh, order by, we can come here. What I like to do is have the task owner and the task name assigned. This way in calendar, you're gonna see the person's name and the event that they're trying to complete or the task they're trying to complete. And what's important here is when you're building this out, if you set up your automation to add calendar events without spaces or whatever information you have here, that it remains the same in the query. So if there is a space here and a space here, then you wanna make sure that's added. Otherwise, it's not going to find that information. So again, keeping it consistent to what we already have here, we're gonna hit okay. Then let's start with the router that's gonna go if the event exists and then if the event does not exist. So we need to go grab a router. We're gonna do the following. We're gonna go condition, number of bundles. We look for number of bundles and if the value is zero as a negative, that means it's not found the event, which then means we generally want to send it over to create that event itself. So we're gonna go to equal to zero. Let's give it a label of if event doesn't exist. And then we'll do the same thing for condition number of bundles. And I'm gonna do equal to or greater than or equal to one. If does, we can just do if event exists. Okay, we're gonna hit save, readjust this. So if the event exists, then we're gonna go through and update that activity. And if the event doesn't exist, we're going to go through and add that event. So going into Google Calendar, again, we said if event doesn't exist, let's create it. And we're gonna create it using this search rows event details. So we're gonna find the correct <clears throat> calendar now we're gonna give it the correct naming convention. Now, as stated, we are doing task owner. I like to do the little bar and then task name. So this way, every event, again, is gonna look like this. Coal uh, slash rigs, well, coal rigs slash market research as the example. Now again, start date and end time. These are where we wanna make sure we have these correct ex uh, values for this information. If it is not correct, it's not following this structure, it's gonna end up breaking. And you're gonna be really wondering why it was doing that. <coughs> okay. Now we wanna go to advanced because oftentimes when you're doing this for business, you're not just doing it for yourself, you're going through and you wanna assign tasks and invite people to events um, without with your team. So don't need duration. If you have any details and you wanna add a description Right? Maybe you want to add, hey, it's a research task, and here's the description of that task, right? You can add that here. Then let's go and add attendees. We don't need to add the name field. If we don't add it, it's going to automatically populate it with their information. We can at least, we at least need to make sure we add the corresponding email owner, so the task owner. From here, everything else can basically be the same. And if we have any special attachments, right? If you had like a link to a document here, you'd be able to just grab that and put that link right here. If you needed to have a conferencing, you can just simply click yes or no. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. Now let's jump down here real quick and we're just gonna do one for this current example. We're gonna go to Google Calendar. If that event already exists, we're gonna update the event. <laughs> do this automatically tries to find it what we need to do is we need to deselect mapping it's going to take a sec here deselect the mapping you want to just go and auto select the event the calendar that it's associated to because all of these are generally going to be associated to the same uh, person who created it go to event id select map now this is where we're gonna go through and use that naming convention, which is task owner dash task type or task name, I mean. This here 
then we'll make a search for this event ID. Actually, my bad. Put that in the wrong space. Event name. Here's the event ID, which we're going to grab here. So we search for the event. If that event has information, the event ID will be here. So it's going to search in this calendar for this event ID. If it does, we're going to update it with the following information. Now, generally, you probably can just go through and update all of this, refill in all the same information, just so that way, if you did go through and make any changes, that those changes are going to be automatically pushed over. So we can put in task type, description. We want to add in any additional attendees. We can, right? So there we go. And let's just say we, we gave them the name. Show me as busy default. We can say all guests. They can invite others, see guest list and hit OK. OK, so if we just save this, run this once, it should work. These events already exist, so they should end up coming through. But let's check and see what this says here. Single events. Ooh. Delete this module. Number of bundles. Bundle position greater than or equal to one. Just check everything here, make sure it's nice. We're going to do, we're gonna query by start date. Actually, we don't need to do that. We're gonna go That's fine. We're going to run this once more. Let me grab what I was doing over here in this other one just to make sure the data is coming through. Okay, so now once we've put everything together, we've created this basic structure here where we have the event if it exists, we have the event if it exists, and we're gonna update it, or we're gonna create that new event. We're now gonna go through and run the automation once just to make sure everything works. So we're gonna go through, hit search rows, searching for those existing events. If the event exists, we're gonna push over the new information and make sure that data has been updated with the new details. And here, you see we have eight events that ran and we have eight of them right here. One thing I did want to go through and say we did mean, need to change this, which was not greater than or equal to, it is just marked as equal to. Because in all instances, we open this up, there is a bunch of data here, right? But if we come here, you'll see the bundle number equals one. So there's one of each of these events for that date and that time. And so as long as that value is one, it's gonna push over this corresponding information. Right, so this is the high level version of this. If you're looking to get more detail, we can go through and run a more complex example. One of the things I generally would like to do is add another router here, where if the event doesn't exist, then we're gonna go through, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna hit router. Now we're going to clone this, put this guy here actually. 
we're going to delete it here. So this way we keep this uh, existing filter. And we're going to do the following. Just delete this, delete this for the time being. We're going to set a filter here that says that is based on the task type or consistency of um, targeting. What I like to do this for is so that way I can associate maybe different colors to the type of task. I just like color coordinating things, makes things easier. So we can do the following. So anytime the task name, right? So we'll do research task. Condition is task name is equal to research. It will then go to create the event here. Then all we have to do here is go to color. Once this opens, and then we're going to be able to go through and associate whatever color we would like to use for that event. We can just go through now clone, and we're going to associate to this router as well. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go through here. We're going to do content planning, content planning tasks equal to content planning. Task name is this. And just for this example, I'm just going to do two of them. So that way you guys understand the concept and we'll be able to do the same thing here at the update event in just a moment. So actually, you know what? We're just going to do that now. We're going to go, um, we're just going to go open up a new one, flow control, router, clone this event, put it here, delete these extra modules that we don't need. We can now delete this one. It keeps this router. Now we're going to do the same exact filtering. So if content planning is that task type, it's then going to go there. So we're going to do content planning task update. Copy. We're going to do clone. We do research. equal to get rid of the space. Come over here to task type again and hit OK. Now we're going to clean this up, give it better visual, save it, close this so we can go and look at it. We're going to run it now again. And as you see here, it's going to go through and only update for just those two. As you see, we only had three tasks associated to these. One, two, three. And so then those, once we reload here, it's going to update those colors accordingly. There we go. And so the out colors have been updated between competitor and market research, which are the key tasks that were there. Awesome. So it's pretty straightforward, a little automation, but it's super nice when you've been building out a pretty extensive marketing plan. And then you got to go through and start putting all those pieces into play. So that way you can actually keep you and your whole team aligned and up to date with things that are going on. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Other than that, we'll see you guys in another video. Thanks.